Welcome to another vlog. So today I will do a little Q&A that uh, you've asked me some questions on Instagram and I thought I would include it in today's vlog. So I'll do that a bit later. And now I thought I would show you what I'm currently working on. I've been finishing a um, Nebula necklace and I just finished soldering of the two main parts so come and see so this is a part of nebula necklace and i've already soldered her hair and her face on now i'm gonna have to prepare it for soldering all these tiny little bits which are little butterflies like that and some stars so there is a video coming about gemstones about sourcing gemstones finding them how to tell if the gemstone is real genuine and also like what to look for so hopefully that will be something interesting and it's actually a three video series that i'm doing in a collaboration with um, lapidary artists and other jewelry makers so that's all info for now but you probably know them so that's very exciting and i can't wait to share what they have to say and their advice and um, stories with you i wish i had the world to give you baby I don't live in hell the time To tell you bedtime stories Or to chase away the monsters from your mind Sorry I was late today I didn't get to see you dance the walls Spinning around the living room All dressed up in your mother's clothes oh, you know I'm gonna need to clean my quenching bowl As you can see, the water oh really <laughs> anyway <laughs> water turned blue so i'm gonna have to clean it and fill it with fresh water there we go fresh quenching bowl with water and that's ready for soldering <laughs> so for this now for all these tiny little uh elements i will be actually using soldering paste um probably easy because i've used hard solder to sweat solder these together so for these tiny pieces i think i might just use easy uh, soldering paste solder paste it's very helpful because it helps for these little elements to stick to the metal so they're not using or jumping when you're hitting them up so that's actually quite handy
as you can see I've planned um, I've planned it before and I took a photo so I've had a photo on my camera so I wouldn't have to you know go from the very beginning again and I used a reference photo and also the original drawing as a reference to know where to put all these elements so I'm really trying to place them exactly where I wanted them to be the butterflies and now that I have them placed I will pick each one up with tweezers and I will apply solder onto it and I will put it back and stick it to the metal and hopefully that will work <laughs> yeah okay so wish me luck <laughs> have been soldered hopefully they will all stick and I won't have to resolder it so once this is all nice and clean and white I will have to solder uh, these silver balls like stars and I've got yeah I've got a couple more uh, butterflies that are on the side so I will have to finish that and then it will be all ready for um, cleaning and um, sanding and polishing and after that I will have to darken it with patina and after that I will have to polish it again and it will be finished <laughs> so oh and the bale I will have to solder the bale on good I remember it <laughs> Yeah, so quite a few steps. They take a lot of time to make, but um, making these necklaces actually makes me really happy, so I don't mind. <laughs> So Q&A time, let's answer your questions. So uh, Corinthia Designs asks, do you use ventilator when you silversmith? I don't, I don't have a ventilator yet, but it's something I want to have in the future, especially if you know I have a proper space that I will be able to fit all of these things there. For now, I just uh, ventilate my room. I do have a big room here with a big, huge uh, balcony doors so that's that helps and when it's warm they actually stay open almost all the time so um that's good for now but ventilator is something to consider for your health <laughs> pins and beetles asks uh what's your favorite jewelry accessory to make i would say probably rings i really enjoy uh, like a chunky big rings 
when I finish them, I really like this feeling of putting them on and, you know, just walking around. But um, recently, I think I really enjoyed making these um, necklaces because, I don't know, they're just so fun and these are my own drawings that I make in silver and I think that really, it's really exciting for me. So that would be my new favorite part. Jasmine Davidson asks, how can I start silversmithing? I really want to, but don't know where to begin. I know, in the beginning it can be so overwhelming, so start by getting some books. These books will have like further instructions usually about tools that you should get and how to set up your space, watch YouTube videos as well and maybe read some blog posts like other people's um, experiences, how they started, what they did and it might be helpful hopefully. <laughs> Workshop with Lou asks, I'm interested in polishing techniques as a total beginner. Any advice would be welcome. So I'm myself practicing polishing and just trying to get the best results. And I think the part that was really important was for me to realize that the stage where you use like abrasive papers, wet and dry papers and bathing sticks, it's like sanding, <laughs> is crucial to get good polishing later and you can't skip it and you have to go through all the stages and you have to be very careful because if you don't do it properly then you're gonna have a lot of scratches that you will not remove when polishing so definitely focus on that and then you can try and experiment with different bits for a rotary tool or polishing papers they are also really good if you don't have a rotary tool. Rebels and Art asks, how would you describe your brand and does it reflect your inner soul? <laughs> I think it does because when I was creating it, I was listing things that make me happy and that I personally enjoy and I want people to feel when they see or think about my brand. So, I really wanted to include some nature in it, a little bit of like cosmic vibes, like um, space, stardust. And also I wanted to have this like nature and boho vibe combined with more minimalistic touch, so like modern boho. So it's really hard to say that, like um, to be very short about this, but that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it peace love vegan yes <laughs> what do you wish you would have known before starting silversmithing um, that I shouldn't rush that everything will come to me with time that I should just focus on practicing and you know just me and my work and give myself some time and not worry that I don't have this style yet, I don't have my signature design yet, because you can't rush it and you can't push it, so it will come to you after a while. Eva asks, um, if you would choose, would you like to be a sock or a glove? <laughs> a glove. <laughs> Who is better in creating jewelry, men or women? Ooh. <laughs> um, no, it's not that men or uh, women are better. I think it's just the designs and your inspiration that you use makes it different from each other and not the gender, like it's not the gender that matters here. It's your personal choice and inspiration and taste that reflects in your work and your art that matters. Another question for, from Eva. Um, what are the three places you would like to visit and how they would reflect or inspire your work? Um, that's a good question. I would definitely love to visit Japan. Um, I just find this place magical and packed with inspiration. And I really love their art and 
I would love to go there and just see this art in person and translate it into my own work. Then I would love to visit um, Iceland and there it wouldn't be probably a particular um, element that would inspire me but rather the vibe and the atmosphere that I would like to include in my work as well that would be probably like more rough uh, minimalistic when you're not inspired do you look at other people's work or do you do creative activities I try not to look at other people's work definitely not jewelers because that can be very tricky and it might have the opposite effect you if you're uninspired and you look at other people's work you are more i think likely to compare yourself to feel down that you are not creating anything like that right now that you are uninspired or you might you know just even unintentionally remember these designs and then use them and unintention unintentionally copy someone and that's that's bad and we shouldn't copy ever <laughs> it's it's really bad so i would definitely say not to look at other people's work uh, but you could for example scroll a bit on pinterest and look at uh, like paintings fashion uh, maybe drawings and just you know you never know which element might speak to you and inspire you suddenly and for me it was a sky <laughs> and art nouveau and you know just different elements that you might combine and create something completely new and you ask if i do any uh, creative activities um not really either no i i tend to force myself to get bored actually i will make a video about this because that's actually really interesting and it's something I try to do when I feel uninspired and I have no ideas. <laughs> so I just try to force myself and yeah, you have to force yourself because we are so unused to just doing nothing and having, you know, blank mind. We are constantly occupied, so it's really hard. So I have to force myself to um, get a bit bored and that's when ideas start to flow and it's really good for you. <laughs> One more question, Cornelia Jewelry. I think that's a good question to finish um, the Q&A. Uh, what motivated, inspired you to start making jewelry? Everything. <laughs> I wanted to be a jewelry maker. I wanted to be independent. I wanted to be a creative person. I wanted to work like in creative field. I wanted to be active, so for example, I studied history of art, but this wasn't what I needed. I need to make things so actively, so that was one of the reasons why I started doing this. And it was also because I've realized that I can, because for a while I didn't know that I actually that I actually could do it. I thought that I would have to start another like uni course or something like that. Mm, and no, I didn't. <laughs> I could just go and do it myself. So that's one of the reasons. Right, so that's all the questions I have today. Thank you so much for asking them. Many of them gave me ideas for new videos. So there will be like separate videos, for example, about inspiration and boredom. And there will be a video about pricing jewelry, etc. Starting your um, handmade creative business and things like that. So stay tuned. And for now, thanks again for watching. I hope you'll have a good week and I will see you again soon. Bye. And subscribe.